If you've been following the issues at Lake Mead, then photos showing the bathtub ring at Lake Mead are probably familiar to you. Photos showing that more of the intake tower is visible due to the following level of Lake Mead is, is probably familiar to you. And you've probably also read articles that talk about the issues at Lake Mead and along the Colorado River in general. Now, one of the questions that will come up is, can Lake Mead fill again? And, and the obvious answer to that is, well, of course it can fill again. Now, when we start asking, will it fill again? Well, it's difficult to tell what the future holds, but sometimes it is helpful to go look back at the past to give us some perspective on this. One of the first things I like to start with is the natural flow or the flow that's available in the Colorado River. The blue line shows a running average, and it shows that the natural flow is just below 15 million acre feet, and uh, it's actually pretty close to about 14.7 million acre feet. And that's one of the first issues. We have an allocation on the Colorado River that's greater than this amount between what's allocated to the upper basin, the lower basin, and to Mexico. The other issue is shown by the red dots. This shows that for the past 10 years, eight of those years have been below average with five of those years being very low. You might be tempted to think that Las Vegas is the reason why Lake Mead has gotten low, and that's uh, um, understandable because of the proximity of the city of Las Vegas to Lake Mead. But when we look at the data, we can see that the Southern Nevada water system, which supplies water to the city of Las Vegas, uses a, a somewhat small amount, especially when compared to the largest use of which is the irrigation districts in the state of California. So if we look at the history of the elevation at Lake Mead, Lake Mead filled in 1941. And if we look at the current elevation, we can see that it is the lowest on record since Lake Mead has filled. And if we look to go see how low Lake Mead is, we can see that it's 175 feet from being full. Now, if we're looking at whether or not Lake Mead will fill again, we need to work in volumes. And so uh, when we look to see how much volume we need, that's 19 million acre feet or 1.3 years of average natural flow, which means that if none of the flow was used at all and we got the average natural flow, it would take 1.3 years to fill Lake Mead. Now, that's unrealistic to think that we're not going to use any, but it's just another way of thinking about the amount of volume that's needed to fill Lake Mead. Of course, Lake Mead is not the only lake in the system. Another one of the large lakes is upstream of Lake Mead, and that's Lake Powell. And we'll go look at the same data at Lake Powell. Lake Powell is a newer lake than Lake Mead. It began filling back in the early 1960s, and didn't get completely full until 1980. And again, if we look at the current elevation, we can see that it is the lowest on record. And if we go look to see how far down Lake Powell is, Lake Powell is 165 feet down. And Again, we want to look at that volume also. That's 17 million acre feet needed to fill Lake Powell or 1.1 years of average natural flow. So if we added the years of average natural flow from Lake Mead and Lake Powell, we basically have to use no water if we had average natural flow for 2.4 years to get both of these full. One thing I want to do is go back and look in history to see, well, were, were we ever down this far and have we refilled? So I went back to the time period from about 1965 to 1980, so it's roughly 15, 16 years, and I found that Lake Mead was 132 feet down. I used the same time period for Lake Powell, but in order to use that time period, I had to use the time period when Lake Powell was filling, and we needed at that time 210 feet uh, to fill in Lake Powell. So I summarized that data. So back in March of 1965, we needed a rise at Lake Mead of 132 feet, a rise in Lake Powell of 210 feet, a total storage increase of roughly 34 million acre feet. In August of 2022, we needed a greater rise, or we will need a greater rise in Lake Mead, but a smaller rise in Lake Powell. The volume increase is going to be a about the same, but a little bit greater at 36 million acre feet. So I went to go see what the Colorado River natural flow was 
in these years of 1965 to 1980. And I found out we had an average annual flow of about 14.2 million acre feet. If you take the total volume that needed to be filled to 34 million acre feet, you needed roughly maybe two to 2.2 million acre feet per year of water to be stored in order to get both Lake Mead and Lake Powell filled. That means that you have an average left over per year of about 12 million acre feet for losses, for filling other reservoirs in the system and for usage, which means that we had a less usage occurring during that time period, which means that we're not really comparing apples to apples when we look at the time period of filling from 1965 to 1980 and what's required now. One thing I do want to point out is that we did fill back in 1980, and we actually got to the point where we had a very wet four-year period from 1983 to 1986. In fact, we spilled both Lake Mead and also Lake Powell during that time period. The average annual flow from 1983 to 1986 was about 22.8 million acre feet. So just a, a rough volumetric computation if we have allocated 16 and a half million acre feet, then that would leave us with roughly 6 million acre feet per year if this same wet four year period were to occur, which would give us about 24 million acre feet in, in extra water, which means that it would fill up about two thirds of what we need uh, in Lake Mead and Lake Powell. So again, this analysis that I did, it was very, very simple volumetric analysis just to give you some perspective and some history. Um, the system's much more complex than that, but um, if you found this video to be helpful, I'd appreciate it if you like the video and or subscribe to the channel. Also, if there's comments that you have about the analysis or things that you want the viewers to know, I'd appreciate you throwing, in that, throwing those into the comments section. Uh, I do appreciate the engagement and I appreciate you watching this video. Thanks.